The question we also get asked a lot by dealers is how do we set up the anti-lag strategy uh, for like time attack cars, rally cars, uh, also just street cars making them uh, pop, bang, how it seems to become a sensation of having flames from your street car. Um, so basically this, this video is just basically talk about how that's done and the ways that you can set it up. So the first thing to bear in mind is that with the, a simple strategy, you don't have to worry about having an ALS switch assigned in the, uh, in, the, in the pin assignments. You can actually do that in the calibration switches and then assign in the, the calibration mode basically which anti-lag calibration select strategy is going to be active. So the way to think about this, say if you are, let's put this to off, you're in basically Cal 1 at the moment, you move to Cal 2, what you can then do is that goes to Cal 2 table under the anti-lag strategy, which is this table, which then you can define the fuel cuts, ignition retard, fuel multiplier, etc. So let's put this all back to, to 2 as we had it before. So basically now the Cal 2 table is active. Um, and what you need to, before that table becomes active, you sometimes have to bear in mind that the start calibration is active. So set, if you don't want to have a start calibration, because you generally use noise control, Set the bypass vehicle speed at zero, exit throttle angle at zero, and uh, and then don't worry about the rest of these. You can leave as they were, so to speak. What that will then do is it will then jump to the calibration two, and you can actually see that is active by looking over here on the right hand side, and you can see the ALS cal state is at two. If you double click on it, you can see two. Now, what that means now then is basically that the the strategy is looking at these tables. So at the moment, because this customer wanted to have some pops on the overrun with this car. Um, you can also use this for overrun fuel cut if you want as well to be able to instead of having just a full cut you can actually define the amount of cut you want in the fuel uh, severity cut table so basically the way I've set it up is I've got the the bypass duty select as drive by wire because this car is drive by wire if you have a throttle bypass valve then you need to set it as that I've then got the driver demand select set as PPS because this car has got a pedal sensor and a TPS sensor I want it to be that when I lift off the pedal, then the uh, anti-lag is being applied uh, and the cut applied. So what we can do is we can take the retard out of it and then just look at the fuel cut severity at the bottom here. And to have it so that basically I've changed the brake points, which are in here for the, the pedal position. It says throttle, but it basically when you change the driver demand, it means either or. So basically I've got it as 1 or 1 1.0. So what that means is this brake point here, the last bottom one, is active when I am not on the pedal. So if I go look at the final pedal, you can see it's a 0. If I touch the pedal, it goes up, and then as you lift off, it comes down. So what we can then do is basically in this axis over here on the bottom now, where I'm highlighting here, we can set a fuel cut severity which we want in the overruns area. So basically, if we were to then rev the car, as you lift off, you can see a fuel cut severity of 30% that's being pulled. If you want to make that 100%, so like a proper overrun fuel cut, you just put that to 100, and you can see that it cuts the fuel completely and comes back to idle a lot quicker. Generally, if you want to start having some flames net, you generally need to work on the ignition side of things. So in this particular instance, you need to look at working on the in retard. Um, Depending on the, the setup of the engine, the valves, etc., you've got this is really down to your conversation with your engine builder when you're calibrating this. Um, but for example, this particular car has got a fully built head, so we, we, we can put in here 50 guys, 55 degrees of retard in here. When I lift off now, you can actually hear that it's popping away, and basically that's because the, the combustion has happened now in the exhaust. Now, if you are just wanting to have pops and bangs, this is an easy way of doing that. Um, and basically the fuel cut does have an effect on it because you change the amount of fuel that's being obviously portrayed into the exhaust in order to cause the combustion to happen there. If you were to set it to 100% uh, cut, even having that retard there, you don't get any pops because there's no fuel there. So generally, have it around about 30% is a good starting point and adjust it to how you want it to suit basically. Then. The bypass duty is the important one if you are wanting to run and have an anti-lag strategy uh, for like a rally car installation. Uh, basically when you are off the pedal then you can set the bypass duty amount in which you want the throttle to be kicked open. Now because the bypass duty is set by drive by wire, this is the amount the throttle position will be kicked open when you're in this state of the active, uh, the, ILS being act the ALS being active. So we can look at TPS here, you can see it's in its general state here of 3. 
when we then lift off, you can see it's going to 7 and then slowly comes back down. Now if I was to set this at say 15, and you lift off, you can see there that it's actually holding the RPM up for longer. Now you can't obviously hear the turbo here, but if you were to watch the manifold pressure, you can actually see that it's spawning the manifold and keeping the turbo alive quite nicely, having that amount of uh, bypass. The key thing is, is to um, basically ensure that the engine braking is enough to basically be able to stop the car pushing on with this bypass duty amount on there, okay? And also enough to keep the manifold pressure basically in uh, the turbine working to create manifold pressure so that when you come back on the throttle it's instant. So as you come off, you can see here the manifold pressure is really quick to come up. If I was to set this just as one, you can see the manifold pressure falls. The manifold pressure falls instantly. Okay, so you go straight back to 468. Put the throttle back in. You can see it's keeping the turbine energy alive there in order to keep basically turbine drive pressure there and your manifold pressure is going to be more instant when you come back on, which is for an antelope strategy. Now, the thing is to obviously also bear in mind here is you have got the throttle timeout. So basically, when the throttle is below this value, okay, for X amount of time, it will have a timeout. That's to basically stop in antelope strategies the ALS being active for too long and causing damage to manifolds and heat, etc. Because this car is only used just for a few pops, etc., we've got the timeout at 60 and the throttle angle at minus 90, so the timeout never incurs. It's also worth setting the temperature. Uh, so basically, if these air temperature charge temperatures were to be re reached, basically the ALS strategy would go into another mode uh, and basically go into recovery mode. And when it's in recovery mode, in the calibration strategy, you can then set the fuel cut to find them out. So generally what we'd actually do is set there a higher fuel cut so it brings the heat down if it was used in an ALS strategy for a rally car. But for a pops and bang strategy, it's only pulling a little bit um, uh, of retard and a bit of fuel cut. So it's just, uh, and it's only set generally on a, a custom map, so it's not used all the time. But it's worth bearing that in mind when you are calibrating the cars.